blob number one. Right, so it is a extended piece of structure. We can see that we've got the n, uh, sorry, the c terminus of the current build there. Um, what we need to do is extend it. Uh, we can use the sequence view, which will tell us that the other chain, the B chain, has extra residues that we don't have in the A chain. So we need to do some de novo building. Well, one of the ways in which we can make these is using de novo model building. Let's do that. We need to fit this loop. The way to do that is to uh, calculate fit loop, parameter engine and search. I'm irritated by these glitches. I hope you aren't <laughs> too much. Um, 94 to 96, and we saw that the sequence 96 Yes, thank you. The sequence is QTC, so type it in. And we're going to uh, do RAM searching and restraints. OK, so uh, it did some polyala building, then it mutated it, then it refined it. We could see that the glutamine is well placed. Um, I can move on between the residues using space on the keyboard to move up and down the uh, the chain. So shift space goes backwards and space goes forwards. Let's look at this cysteine here. It's wrong. It's wrong. The model is wrong. So we need to do some adjustment. We can see that it should be a disulfide there, but it's actually occupied by a carbonyl oxygen. So what I'm going to do is to use keyboard rotate to bring the atoms uh, of the side chain into that peanut shaped density. So over they go, just uh, uh, with uh, control shift arrow keys. Translation is control arrow keys. Ah, glitchy, glitchy, glitchy. And then I'm going to do some refinement and it pushes it into the density. There it goes. I'm just going to drag and drop it into the density there. Right, we can see that those sulfide is properly formed now. Now we have our carbonyl oxygen, which is at the end of the chain, so we need to change it to a carboxylate. And we add an OXT to the residue to do that. So add OXT to residue, the defaults are fine at the C terminus of the A chain, and in it goes. There we go. What's next? Uh, we want to find um, residues with missing atoms. So uh, that's under calculate residues uh, mo uh, modeling residues with missing atoms. We get residue 72, it's missing a nitrogen in the main chain for some strange reason. The way we fix that is by deleting the whole residue and then adding one back and that produces a residue with a nitrogen. It used to be a cysteine so we can mutate this alanine into a cysteine. There is our mutation bar here and we click on the cysteine. You can also see that the cysteine is in two locations, possibly as a result of radiation damage. Possibly not though. Um, and then we choose the occupancy of the second component. And if we do real space refinement, I can choose one of those models. There we go. And they split the position of the C beta. You can see the C beta is uh, different between these two models. Right. What's next? Ramachandran plot is nice and clean, and zero outliers. We have fixed all the residues with missing atoms. We've filled all our blobs. What's left? Well, we might add some waters. Calculate other modeling tools, find waters. The defaults are sensible. I believe them to be. And there they go. Add it in. And if we want to review the positions of these new waters, we can do that by navigating to the first one. We've got the D chain there. So I click on the first one in the um, chain. 
uh, close that dialog. Now I press space and I can move uh, onto the next water, space, space. If I want to see the way in which they're interacting with their environment, so the purple bonds are potential hydrogen bonds, um, then uh, I, can, I can enable that. So as I move on, then uh, uh, press space, it moves to the next one and shows the hydrogen bonds again. Right. So I think the thing that I want to do now is to customize the interface. You see display manager go to atom and ligand. Well, to the right of that, there's a vertical divider. Click to the right hand side with the, of the vertical divider with your right mouse, go to manage buttons, and then we can add in some extra uh, extra items into the interface. What I find is useful, spherifying and back rub rotimers, uh, maybe tandem refine as well. Okay, and when I do that, they appear in the interface and they are saved for your next session. Um, so these goes into your preferences. It will be, um, when you fire up Qt again, those buttons will be in place. And we can use those for uh, manipulating the model. All right, I think I'll leave it there. Uh, that just covers the basics of Qt. Um, there are there's more things to learn. <laughs>